It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Barry. Chapits. We are, at this moment in time, trapped in a big void of time and space as we await Frederick Henri's Conan to come out. In that time, I thought I'd check out another Frederick Henri game which has just been released called Le Batisseurs Antique. Obviously this is the French version and so hopefully an English version will be available soon. Uh, but this is like a 2.0 version of his other game, Le Batisseurs, which is in English The Builders, Moyen Age, Middle Ages, and it's pretty much the same game in a small tin. But will this tide me over until Conan comes out? At the beginning of the game, each player will receive 10 money gold being five and silver value of one and they will choose one of the apprentices now each apprentice is slightly different for example this apprentice is a skilled in brickwork and painting whereas this one is skilled in woodwork and in architecture you choose a starting player and give them the starting player card and then every player will have three free actions to which to play if they wish to have more than three actions, they can pay five to gain an extra action, and five for every additional action afterwards. The setup of the table will go like this. Anyone who's played the Builders Middle Ages will recognize this row of workers and this row of buildings, but they won't recognize this row of investments, which is new to this version of the game. As you can see, there were five cards played face up of builders, workers, and then there's these four piles of investment plus your money. Let's take a closer look at the actions that you can do. One of the actions you can do is you can hire a worker. It's a simple case of taking the worker that you want. So like for example, I'll take this master here who has a level three in brickwork and a level two in woodwork, and he will cost five to put into play. You immediately replace that card, and if you wish to, you can take another one for another action and replace. Another thing you can do is you can take a building site. So it's a simple case of taking the card and then replacing it from the pile. And if you want another one, you can take another one and replace it from the pile. After a while, you start to have a bit of a collection of building sites and workers in front of you. A third action you can do is you can send one of your workers off to work on a building site. This will cost one action so for example if I send this master off I'd have to pay five sisters to the bank and then I can place him on the building that I wish him to work at like so and as you can see these resources match up and line up identically and so it makes it easy to count so I've done the two paint required for this nobleman's mansion um, but I've put some architecture in and I don't need to if I wish to on the same turn, I could send another worker to work on the same building. But if I do, as well as paying the five sisters, I would have to use two action points to send him there. Whereas if I sent him to another building site, say over here, it would only cost me one action point. So for each additional worker you sent to the site on the same turn, it will cost you more actions. So it's sometimes best to send one worker each turn because it will only cost me one point of action on the next turn. Once the requirements are met, so in this case I've got more than two brick, got two more, more than two wood and more than two paint, the workers return home and this building is complete. I will then recuperate the money value there of 10 sisters, I flip this card over and this counts as victory points. So I have three victory points. If at any time I have more than 17 points worth of buildings in front of me, that calls for the end of the game. Some of these are not actually buildings. This, once I've constructed it, will become a crane, which will give me a resource of three stone, as well as some secret bonus victory points at the end of the game. This will go 
into my worker row and I can use it as a worker. So for one action, I can send it to a building site and it gives me three stone resource. The fourth thing you can do is if you find yourself short of money is you can take money from the bank. For one action, you can take one sisters. If you use two of your actions on a turn, you can take three sisters. If you use all three of your actions, you can take six sisters. The fifth action you could possibly do is make an investment. Now this is new for those who have played Middle Ages. An investment, you can only do one of these on your turn. You're not allowed to do more than one. So it doesn't matter if you have three actions or six actions on your go, you can only make one investment. One investment you can make is you can make a loan from the bank. You just basically take one of these cards, it will instantly give you 10 sisters but it'll give you a minus two victory points at the end of the game if you still have this card in front of you. Now, you can take as many of these as you want during the course of the game, so you could have two or three. You don't have to have one. But you will have to pay 15 sisters to get rid of this card and get rid of the negative victory points. Another investment you can make is you can buy a tool. You immediately pay two sisters and then you choose whichever tool is remaining. So you have a saw, which will give you a plus one on wood. You will have um, an easel, you have a hammer, and you have some paint, and they will give you a plus one. And then what you can do is you can use these tools with one of your workers. You can send a worker with a tool, which will give you the immediate benefit of that tool. You could send one of your workers to school you pay an immediate seven sisters and you get to take one of these transparent cards which give a boost on one of the skills so for example I pay seven I collect this which gives me a plus three on my skill I then attach that to whatever uh, worker I have and that becomes a permanent skill throughout the whole of the game for that worker whenever I send this worker out I just pay the cost of five for his work and he gives me extra 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 abilities the last thing you can do and last investment is you can buy a slave now these cost seven but whenever you send them out to work they are free you don't have to pay for them to work but if you have any slaves left in your hand at the end of the game they give you a minus one victory point and as you can see they all have different skills with the slave, you cannot equip a tool with. And with the slave, you cannot send them out to school to learn bigger and better things. But what you can do with a slave is for one action, is you can set them free. One action, you turn the card over, and the slave is freed. He will still do the same skills, uh, but every time you send him out to work, you will need to pay four sisters. And you lose that minus one negative point at the end of the game. Gameplay will continue until one player has more than 17 points of buildings in front of them. When that does, the play continues until it goes back to the first start player and then the game immediately ends. You total up all the buildings that you have built. You will also add into the count any uh, machines which give you extra two points. If you have slaves and they've not been freed, you will minus them. But if you wish to, you can pay five sisters and free them so you lose that minus one point if you have loans and you have 15 sisters pay the 15 sisters to get rid of the loan and then you count up all your points you count up your money each one is worth 0.1 of a point and each five is 0.5 of a point so obviously 10 money would be one point the player with the most points is the winner at the end of the game the batisseurs and whatever it's going to be called in English. This is a board game that every traveling board game player should take with them. It's a very, very small, inexpensive game, but it's a light to medium weight game, very much like something which is like five times the size of it. It is quite a chunky game in here. Uh, obviously a lot more chunkier than the original uh, Middle Ages version, so if you like the Middle Ages one and you want a bit more of a challenge, this is a no-brainer go out and buy this. It, it resembles very much 
Splendor, where you've got resources in the middle, and it's a race to get to the end because it's it's kind of mathematical, trying to use your actions to accumulate the most points and get the best route to victory. In comparison to Splendor, this is just as easy to learn. There are more routes to go down because of the investments, you know, should you invest in slaves or not. It's just a great little brain burner. Um, it's not little because it's big. The only downside for me when I play this is I don't have that want to play it again kind of feeling that I do when I play Splendor. I play a game of Splendor and I'm like, let's play again! Because this time I'm going to crush you! In this, you don't, no, that's not there. You play it and you go, oh, that'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> the components are wonderful. Nice tin box for those people that like tins. All apart from these things here, which have done that. Yes! This game plays in 30 minutes, as it says on the tin, but only when you've got two players. If you've got three players or more, the game becomes longer. Definitely not a game for those people that like to waste their electricity bills with their fridge door open as they decide what they're going to eat. Anyone is a very, very slow, thinky player, this game will drag and drag and drag. You've got three actions and it's like... Um, Yeah, you get the picture. Uh, plays better with more people because the, the, the all the cards are changing all the time. Uh, you can kind of play in your own little world and worry about what you've got in front of you. Or you can play and watch what the other players are doing and uh, try and take the, the cards that you think they might want to benefit with. You know, you can take all the cheap workers or you can take all the expensive workers or just take nothing but slaves or you know, it's up to you. Um, big game, small box. Um, you could play it with children younger than 10. My daughter's picked it up pretty quickly. Uh, but apart from that, small tin, big game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.